in this question we have a rectangular prism and we're told it's made of plastic and also if we have a look at the diagram we're given the dimensions of our rectangular prism. So our first step is to figure out what we've been given in the question. So we're told it's made of plastic. Having a look at our table, if we find plastic, we can see the density of plastic is 0 0.93 grams per centimeters cubed. So we can add that in our variable list. And then we're also given the dimensions of our rectangular prism. So we're going to need to use that to figure out our volume. Let's head over to our reference sheet. And here we need to look for the equation for the volume of a rectangular prism. There it is. Volume is length times width times height. So let's write down that equation. length times width times height. And we're just gonna put in our numbers provided in the diagram. Now, since these three are multiplied together, it doesn't actually matter what order we put them in or which we define as the length, the width, or the height. So we can just multiply those all together. So 5.55 centimeters multiplied by 2.34 centimeters multiplied by 4.25 centimeters those are just all three of the dimensions of our rectangular prism given in the diagram. Multiply those together, that'll get us a volume of 55.2 centimeters cubed. So I can pop that into our list here, volume of 55.2 centimeters cubed. Okay, wonderful. So from the question we got the density, from the material and the volume from the dimensions. So now we've got two known variables and one unknown, which is the mass. So heading back to our equation sheet, we're looking for our equation for density. Here it is, density is mass divided by volume. So let's write our equation down. In this question, we're looking to find the mass m. So we're gonna to have to rearrange our equation. Since we've got mass divided by volume, I'm gonna multiply by volume on both sides. And then on the right-hand side, the multiplied and divided by volume will cancel out, leaving us with mass equals volume times density. So now we can just put in our numbers there. So our volume was 55.2. And our density was 0 0.93. So if we put that in our calculator, we'll get a mass of 51.3 grams. So let's pop that in our answer box to check. Awesome. Final step. If a rectangular prism was placed in maple syrup, would it float or sink? So let's have a look at our density table down here. Maple syrup has a density of 1.33 grams per centimeters cubed. This object is made of plastic, which has a density of 0 0.93. So we can see here, the density of the object is less than the density of the liquid. Therefore, our object is gonna float in this situation. In this question, we have a cube we're given the mass of 18.6 grams and we're told it's made of cork. So first let's add those givens to our variable list up here. So the mass we know is 18.6 grams and we're told it's made of cork. So having a look in our density table down here, cork has a density of 0 0.24 grams per centimeters cubed. So we can put that up here in our variable list, 0 0.24 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, so we've got our two known variables and one unknown, which is the volume. So heading over to our equation sheet, 
We're looking for the density mass volume equation. Again, there it is. So let's write that equation down. Density equals mass divided by volume. Okay, here we're trying to find the volume. Right now the volume's on the bottom of this fraction. So I'm gonna multiply by volume on both sides first. So I can cancel out those on the right hand side. Then I need to get volume on its own. So I'm gonna divide by density on both sides so that those densities can cancel out. So I'm left with volume equals mass divided by density as my equation. So we can then put our numbers in. The mass was 18.6 grams divided by the density, which is 0 0.24 grams. Putting that into my calculator, I get a volume of 77.5 centimeters cubed. So we can put that into our variable list up here, 77.5 grams per centimeters cubed. Oh, actually it's centimeters cubed, isn't it, for volume? Perfect, okay. Next question is asking, what is the length of one of the sides of the cube? So we can see over here, we're not actually given the length of one of the sides of our cube. So to figure that out, we're gonna to have to go back to our equation sheet and look for the equation for the volume of a cube. And here it is, volume of a cube, volume is length cubed. So let's write down that equation. So if I know the volume and I'm trying to find the length, I need to rearrange this. So I'm gonna do the cube root of both sides. So the cube root of volume is the cube root of length cubed. And so those parts cancel out. So we're just left with length equals the cube root of the volume. So putting that into our calculator, we need to do the cube root of the volume we already calculated, which was 77.5 centimeters cubed and that's going to get out a length of 4.26 centimeters so let's check we've got that right by entering that in here wonderful and that's just centimeters because it's the length of one of the sides okay final question if the cube was placed in corn syrup would it float or sink Let's have a look at our density table. Corn syrup down here has a density of 1.48 grams per centimeters cubed. Cork, which the cube is made of, has a density of 0 0.24 grams per centimeters cubed. So we can see here, cork is less dense than corn syrup. So since the object is less dense than the liquid that it's in, it's going to float. So that'll be our last step, entering our answer in there. So these questions work exactly the same as the other density questions we've done. The only difference is that for your volume, you're going to need to use an equation that includes the dimensions of the object.